and you're very welcome to Pierce Park here today on the 16th of September. County final day in County Longford already in the minor final. St. Michael's or Longford Slashers have won on a scoreline of 2-12 to 1-5 over Conum Kill. Quite an easy win in the end for the Longford Slashers side, winning the minor championship for the second time in a row. The unmistakable sound of the Longford Pipe Band entertaining the crowd here before the two sides make their way out onto the pitch, both Granard and Drumlish brought out in the dressing room now getting their last few words before they come out quite a stiff breeze blowing today from right to left it's definitely favour the side playing into the town end traditionally the scoring goals here in Pierce Park quite a large crowd in attendance we'll be expecting in the region of six or seven thousand by the time referee John Bannon throws the ball in pitch in immaculate condition as always here in Pierce Park and everything is set now for what will hopefully be a very good county final indeed. <laughs> On the path to the final today, uh, Drumlish, Father Manning Gales have defeated Recline after a replay in the first round. A very shaky start for last year's finalists. Then in the next game they played Bally Mahan and in the end ran out easy winners in that game and in the semi-final defeated all rivals Abilar in what proved to be one of the best games of the championship so far and they took good revenge for their defeat last year on a very wet and windy day in Pierce Park. Granard on the other hand have got through to the final on the back of defeating Edgestown in the first round. They then were due to meet Abilara, but Abilara, of course, were knocked out by Cashel, but Granard Judy knocked Cashel out in the second round of the championship, a game which had divided loyalties for manager Joma Beetle. And then in the semi-final, they took on a very young and promising column kill side, and in the end, defeated that column kill side quite convincingly. So both sides are here in the final, and both hoping to put their name on the Sean Connolly Cup. The last time that Granard St. Mary's put their name on the... Very welcome to Pierce Park here today on the 16th of September. County final day in County Longford already in the minor final. St. Michael's or Longford Slashers have won in the scoreline of 2-12 to 1-5 over Colum Kill. Quite an easy win in the end for the Longford Slashers side, winning the minor championship for the second time in a row. The unmistakable sound of the Longford Pipe Band entertaining the crowd here before the two sides make their way out onto the pitch, both Granard and Tomlish brought out in the dressing room now getting their last few words before they come out quite a stiff breeze blowing today from right to left definitely favour the side playing into the town end traditionally the scoring goals here in Pierce Park quite a large crowd in attendance we'll be expecting in the region of six or seven thousand by the time referee John Bannon throws the ball in pitch in immaculate condition as always here in Pierce Park and everything is set now for what will hopefully be a very good county final indeed. On the path to the final today, uh, Drumlish, Father Manning Gales have defeated Recline after a replay in the first round. Very shaky start for last year's finalists. Then in the next game they played Bally Mahan and in the end ran out easy winners in that game and in the semi-final defeated all rivals Abilar and what proved to be one of the best games of the championship so far and they took good revenge for their defeat last year on a very wet and windy day in Pierce Park. Granard on the other hand have got through to the final on the back of defeating Edgestown in the first round. They then were due to meet Abilara but Abilara of course were knocked out by Cashel but Granard Judy knocked Cashel out in the second round of the championship. A game which had divided loyalties for manager Joe Mabito. And then in the semi-final they took on a very young and promising Callum Kill side and in the end defeated that Callum Kill side quite convincingly. So they, both sides are here in the final and both hoping to put their name on the Sean Connolly Cup. The last time that Granite St. Mary's put their name on the Cup was in 1982 and on that day Kevin O'Rourke was man in the match. But from Lish can claim to have won the Father Manning Cup, or the, should I say the Sean Connolly Cup was in 1998 when Corey Davis was man of the match. They were defeated of course by Dramard in the 1999 championship and then defeated in last year's final by Abby Lara. From Lish have become something of a superpower in the last five or six years in Longford Club football and Granard will know that they will have their work cut out today if they intend to bring the Sean Connolly Cup back to the North Longford town.
So Drumish out in the field for their second county final in two years, defeated last year by Abilara. They'll be hoping for a different result this year, the last time they won it, 1998. That was on the back of a three in a row. So they're hoping to get back into the big time today. Captain David Hannafy. David, of course, who started with Longford and Crow Park this, this year. He'll be hoping that uh, he'll be lifting the Sean Connolly Cup at around a quarter to around half five this evening. Anthony Brennan, team manager from Turlestran in County Sligo, has managed both under 16 and minor teams for Sligo County. Very experienced manager arriving after Jimmy Hannafy left. Tough task to follow, but he's done quite well so far. And Father Manning Gales, after a shaky start to the championship prayer, they scrape by recline. They'll find themselves in the county final and 60 minutes away from lifting the Sean Connolly Cup. The referee for today's game is the very experienced John Bannon. John, of course, who took charge of the 1998 All Ireland final, has been in charge of two senior county championship finals here in Longford already 1994 between Longford Slashers and Column Kill, and in 1997 between Longford Slashers and Drumlish. So, while he may harbour a few small nerves, he won't be too. St. Mary's of Granard out on the field. A very big day for Granard, the town of Granard. They have very, very large support here in Pierce Park today. And they'll be hoping for victory. The last time they won it was in 1982. A big day for St. Mary's. No doubt they will be mindful of their chairman who passed away during the year, Barry Klein. He will be upmost in their thoughts as they focus on bringing back the Sean Connolly Cup for the first time in 19 years. And of course, trained by inspirational casual man Joseph Mavija Joseph himself, who tasted two county finals. In 1984, he was 17 years of age, and then started a cornerback in 1986 when Cashel won against Edgerstown. He will be very experienced in county finals and will no doubt be nervous before this big game. Joseph, of course, who has managed several teams from Gary Castle and Rosemount in Westmead to Athlone Community College, as well as contesting the Roscommon Senior County Final last year, training St. Bridget's when they lost out narrowly to Kilbride. He'll be hoping for a different result today. He's turned Granard football around since he's grown up. And he knows that it's a very, very big day, and in 70 minutes' time, he'll be hoping that he would have led Granard to the Sean Connolly Cup. <laughs> So, right cornerback Pete McQuaid, full back Gary Brady, left cornerback Donald McLaughlin, right half back Martin Mullaney, centre half back Seamus Gallagher, left half back Francis Lennon, a midfield pairing of Colin Hannafy and David Hannafy, the two brothers, David is captain, right half forward Porrick Brady, centre half forward Francis McNamee, and left half forward Cahill O'Reilly, right corner forward Paul McCormick, full forward Porrick Davis, and left corner forward Michael Mullaney. Well, so over the, at the atmosphere here in Pierce Park has livened up somewhat. Thanks mainly due to the pipe band and the parade. Both sides going to be feeling the nerves at this stage. For your information, Drumlish, Fatherman and Gales have 14 county championships to their name. 1927, 28, 1932, 37, 39, 40, 43, 45, 53, 55, 1996, 1997 and 1998, the last time that the cup went to Drumlish. As for Granard, Granard are the next in line on the Roll of Honour. They've won 11 St. Mary's of Granard in 1929, 1930, 1931, 1933, 1934, 35, 41, 66, 67, 1970, and the last time they won it was in 1982. Granard, of course, were in the county final here in 1993, were defeated by Calo just about on that day. 
and a Dronish, of course, last time they were in it was last year, defeated by Abby Lara in the final. The winner of last year's Man in the Match award was Terry Drake. So who will be the winner here in 2001? An hour will tell an awful lot. Both of these sides sprinkled with county players. Drumnish in particular have supplied some fine footballers to the Longford County side in the last number of years. Podgy Davis being one of the most notable. As well as David Hannafy there and Gary Brady have all played for the county team at some stage. As for Granard, well, Alan Neelan at the moment on the current county side. David Hines has started underage for Granard on several occasions, or for Longford, should I say, on several occasions. So, Philip O'Hara and David Hannafy lead both sides around here. Tough time for both Anthony Brennan and Joseph McVeigh. There's very little they can do at this stage. All the work has been done. Both men who have seen it and done it already at various levels and with various teams. Very hard to know where this game will be won and lost today. David Blessing in the centre half back will have a big role to play for Granard. Full back line has been flawless throughout the championship so far. James Hines, a big day for him at centre half forward. He played so well in the semi final, came into the side and did extremely well. The injured Joe O'Donnell, of course, on the line today. What a loss he has been for Granard, and I have no doubt that we will see him at some stage today. As for Drumlish, well, the likes of David Hannafy, Colin Hannafy, Porrick Davis, if they're to win, you'd expect those players to play extremely well. Of course, having to do without the suspended James Breslin today. Now, both sides stand for. A national anthem as the clock ticks down to four o'clock. anticipate many switches in both sides no doubt before the ball is even thrown in what a game we're in store for hopefully it'll be a good game so a photo of Galeer from Kanish and Kunte Adrian Tahar Ivanin Drumnish August Neavara 
Granard. Pagurka Drainish. Panrator John Mananig. Pekins Chimple. Kind Shane Lee Rogers, Jack Agus Toshir Shul, up goes David Hanafi, knocks it down towards Paul McCormick, a big surprise starting at midfield today. That goes on Anina, but it's well covered there by Shane McGovern, he wins the first ball. A big battle in store today between himself and Porrick Davis. Porrick Davis tackling David, blessing him, blessing him, winning the ball, getting up and feeds it off at the right foot, up the wing, looking there for James Hines. Hines goes for it, but it's booted out of play there. My Seamus Gallagher, I think, and it's going to be a line ball to Granard under the stand. They're playing into the face of a very stiff breeze in this first half. Line ball to be taken by Alan Nealan, I think. Nealan, another upfield run. He's really got to be stopped if Graham Trumnish are going to win this game because he loves to attack up and down the field. He's been one of the stars for Granard in the championship so far. David Hanafi's going to get to that one before Michael Gettings. Hanafi goes down on the ball, wins it and feeds it out there. It's well run by Carl O'Reilly. O'Reilly turns and feeds it in the right boot. Looking for Perry Davis. Shane McGovern has that well read as does Vinny O'Rourke. They'll be quite happy to let the ball run out and waste a little bit of time playing into a breeze of that strength. So Vinny will be in no rush with the kickouts in this first half. The two managers pacing up and down the line. I know that Johnny McLaughlin has been switched out to Mark Cliff Sheridan. Francis Lennon is playing at cornerback. So at the moment there's four or f five sets of players in the half forward line. A two man foot forward line being operated in there by Drumlish down goes. Desi Kern with the ball, Kern coming out of it. He had a brilliant second half display in the semi final against Colin Kill. He was outstanding and then Granite will need him to be outstanding again today. He wins the first ball anyway. The ball is played off there by David Blessington. Won by Colin O'Hara. O'Hara has David Blessington coming through. Blessing in on the ball now. He's faced by Paul McCormick. He kicks it left footed. A poor ball, however, on this occasion. It's won there by David David Hanafi around the centre of the field. Hanafi looks up on right footed kick. Looking in there for Michael Mullady. A good tackle there by Brian Sheridan. Sheridan wins the ball. Colin Hanafi goes for it. Sheridan keeps it in play. And down goes Michael Mullady on the ball. Mullady being tackled there by Conor O'Hara. Comes back out towards David Hanafi. Hanafi, number nine in his back. Gives it in towards Patrick Brady. Brady has two or three men outside him. Seamus Gallagher making a surge up the right wing. Seamus Gallagher is going to get this ball. Takes his time, right for the kick from Seamus Gallagher. Oh, he had all the time in the world, but he puts the ball to the right and wide. And David Blessing in asking questions as to how Seamus Gallagher found himself in so much space on his own under the stand. But he blasted that one harmlessly to the right and wide, and it's going to be another kick out for Vinny O'Rourke. So, at the moment, from Nish on top, but there's only two minutes gone. Very, very strong breeze. Not quite sure whether it was Granada or Drumnish who opted to play, who had the decision to play which way in the first half, but Seamus Gallagher wins that ball. He gives it off there towards Frank McNamee. McNamee, number 11 on his back, but certainly not playing at centre half ball. That ball won there by Shane McGovern, and McGovern comes storming out with it and plays it up the wing, looking for Davy Hines. Hines wins the ball in front of Pete McQuaid and turns him in the way, goes there with Hines into the stand. Being tackled there by Pete McQuaid. Gives it off. Off towards James Hines. Hines has been tackled there. By McQuaid, a very tidy customer, a very good cornerback, a good crossfield ball there. But for Brian O'Hara, they call him Rusty out and Granity gives it off there towards Michael O'Donnell, back towards O'Hara again. O'Hara wins it, being tackled there by Paul McCormick. Paul does very, very well, but fouls Brian O'Hara and it's going to be a free in to Granite. A good start there from Granite. All came from David Hines making the burst up the wing, turning Pete McQuaid. And it's going to be a free in now. To be taken by Cliff Sheridan. Played generally a very assured free taker. Has played for the Longford under 21s this year. Has been a, an underage star for Longford on several occasions. And this is his first kick of the 2001 county final. How he'd like it to go over just to get the confidence up. Cliff hits it left footer. It's a fine kick from Cliff Sharon and it draws an extremely big roar from the Granite crowd here. It's one point to no score for St. Mary's of Granite. And they're off to the start that Joe Mavihu would have wanted. So while Drumnish spurns two chances down here this end, Granard got one, put it over the bar. And kick out now from Emma Crow out to the centre of the field. Almost won there in midfield by Michael Gettings. The ball breaks loose. Michael O'Donnell wins it. He's been tackled by Martin Milady. Still Michael O'Donnell on the ball. Feeds it off there towards James Hines. Hines looking for options. Nobody to give it to her at the moment. Pops it over towards looking for Lee Moreau. Moreau does enough, but Francis Lennon does well to be out in front. Lennon doing up to win this free and fully free down the field for Fadamanning Gales. 
Is Tony McLaughlin going to take it? No, he's leaving it for Francis Lennon. Lennon will no doubt look to pump this ball in long, which is exactly what he does. Cahill O'Reilly nearly winning it, but it's won instead by Conor O'Hara, and O'Hara wins the free out. Very well won there by the number five. One of three brothers on this team. The others, of course, being Philip and Brian. And David Lessonen looking to take the free here. Looking for a few options. Philip O'Hara making a bit of a run. That ball is pumped in long. It's over the top. Philip O'Hara gets on the end of it. O'Hara goes down and the ball is a score on here for Brennan. Philip O'Hara shoots. And a fine score for Brennan. It was a good free in from David Lessonen. Even into a strong breeze. It went over the top. Over two or three heads. O'Hara was the quickest to react, and he popped it over the bar with the outside of the right boot, and it's two points to no score now for Granard. Eamon Crow with his second kick out from the 21-yard line. Trumlish yet to, yet to get off the mark. Paddy Davis yet to get on the ball. Up goes David Hannafee, fails to win it. It's won instead by Kippy Sheridan. He threw his body into that and won the ball as he came and dives on the ball and wins it, and holds on to it once more and wins the free. Great work there from Desi Keenan. So Granard in no great hurry. Quite happy with the way things are going so far. So it's quite obvious at this stage, Drumlish are going to operate a two-man full forward line of Michael Mullady and Paddy Davis. That ball drove in there by the blessing and upgrade the Amor Oak. Oak does he win it? He doesn't win it first time, but by the higher ground at the end of it, instead it's going to be a line ball now to Drumlish. To be taken by Francis Lennon. Carter Riley trying to get free there, Colin O'Hara. That ball won there by David Blessingen. Blessingen, a judge to have stepped out over the line with it. He's not happy with Frankie Hill's decision there. Corey Brady now with the kick. 1996 when Drumlish won the county championship. For the first time in a long time, Paul Brady was the man in the match on that occasion. Will he be man in the match today? Had that played off there by Cahill Riley towards Palm McCormick back towards Paul Brady. Brady trying to burst inside. Both to do so on that occasion. Feeds it off there towards Conor Hannafy. Hannafy trying to make a dive inside. Does he can and go away from that ball coming in and over the bar. And a very good score there from Conor Hannafy. A fine score there from Conor Hannafy getting away from Desi Kiernan. Hanfi seems to have lined out at corner four, but playing somewhat of a third midfielder. Should suit Granard in that Desi Kiernan, quite a talented footballer, will be well able to play out there. Kick out now, Vinny O'Rourke. Vinny, a good kick out as usual, out towards, looking for Kit. Cliffy Sheridan, Cliffy doesn't get to that one, Donny McLaughlin on instead, Donny a very speedy customer trying to get away from Cliffy Sheridan, he wins the free there. Cliffy no great rush to let him get up off the ground. Donny looking for options, gives it off there towards Porrick Brady, Brady drives the ball along inside, it's cut out there by Brian Sheridan, he read that extremely well, didn't care what was coming left or right, he was going to get to that ball first and so he did, Debbie Hines going for that. There's to win it, however, and it's won there by Frank McNamee. McNamee gives it off towards Paul McCormick, who drives that long ball. Shane McGovern there under it. McGovern cuts it out, does very, very well indeed, and holds on to possession. Still Shane McGovern on the ball, trying to get away. Here's Brian Sheridan this side, gives it to Vinny O'Rourke. Vinny gives it off there towards Desi Kiernan. Desi gives it towards David Lesson. They work their way out of trouble. Away goes Blessing, and like a hair up the field, trying to get away there from Colin Hannafy. And he wins the free. So, Hannafy now. Finally, themselves being ticked here. So David Hines over here, this side of the field, has wandered into an awful lot of free space, and nobody seems to be going with him. Granite would do well to spot him. I think it's the fact that there's a drumlish player down tying his laces. Corey Brady has now spotted him. He's trotting back towards him. So the sun is shining down here on Pierce Park. We've been promised a few showers of rain. Doesn't look like it as at the moment. Hopefully it'll stay away and we'll have a nice clear day for the game. Ball driven in there once again by Blessman. A long ball. 
Well held there by Frank McNamee. He seemed to hold out her with one hand. Did extremely well indeed. And away it comes from this down this left wing. Paul Brady up to punt the ball in. Looking for Pudgy Davis. But once again, Shane McGovern almost held on to it. He seems to have got out in front there. Paul, Paul Davis, Davis trying to work a little bit of space. Davis shoots. It's tailing to the... No, it's not. It's gone straight between the two posts. And he puts it over the bar. And that's exactly how the endless Paul Davis is. He can't be given any room whatsoever. A fine score there from the county star and it's two points each so the first time that he gets on the ball he pops it over the bar so back comes Vinny O'Rourke now Vinny will no doubt take his time the midfield battle could be extremely important here today that ball gone all the way to Michael O'Donnell he feeds it out there towards Alan Nealon. Nealon drives the ball along, looking for somebody inside. Philip Bahara tries to win it. Oh, do the Hines nearly got on to the end of that. That would have been dangerous for John Lynch. That ball scooped off the ground there by Pete McQuay. And that could be another relatively easy free for Granner to pop over the bar. I'd imagine it. No, not David Hines. It's going to be James Hines. So James, try and pop this over the bar. All these kicks will mount up at the end of the day and will prove extremely important. The kick from James Hines, it drops just under the crossbar and it's held by Eamon Crow, who opts to drive the ball out the field. Up goes David Blessing. The ball broken over towards Ben O'Hara. O'Hara gives it back towards Blessing and again. Blessing and going through. He turns towards two or three players. But oh, Blessing is winning absolute beauty over the bar against the breeze. A fine score from David Blessing and he marches back down the field. Delighted with that score clenches the fist to his fellow teammates that's exactly the kind of spirit they need if they're going to beat Father Manning Gales today it'll definitely be Pori Brady's job to try and stop Blessing and making those upfield runs which has destroyed many teams in the championship so far this year and the scoreline at the moment three points to St Mary's of Granite and two to Father Manning Gales Liam O'Rourke goes for the ball breaks it off there towards James Hines Hines trying to hold on to it still James Hines in the ball he wins the free Granite are doing very well around the centre of the field at the moment it's all going to plan for Joseph Mavihil Ball thrown back there towards Blessing and Blessing hits it with the outside of the right boot. A fine ball over towards Philip O'Hara. O'Hara trying to turn Gary Brady. O'Hara, a very strong customer, trying to shake off Gary Brady, but so too his Brady and does enough just to put Philip O'Hara off. Comes back out towards James Hines who gives it towards Liam O'Rourke. O'Rourke, a good ball across the field towards Michael Gettings. Gettings trying to work himself into space. Pops it. Well, kicked it into space all right, but Gary Brady read it extremely well and away come Bottom and Gales on the ball. Johnny McLaughlin, he's all over the place. He's over in the right corner now, pops the ball on towards Colin Hanafy. Desi Kiernan will have a tough task today. And on this occasion, Hanafy has gone through. Alan Elam back defending. Drumlish getting bodies back. Shane McGovern facing off. Paulie Davis. Davis has two men on him at the moment. Still Davis on the ball. It's a left foot footed across the field. It's well cut out there. Extremely well cut out by Colin O'Hara. But a kick there, a fine kick it is too. From Matt Milady, and it's three points each. And at the moment, this county final is living up to expectation. It's proving to be an extremely good game. Great score there from Martin Mullady. So once again, Davis was the architect there. He got the ball out in the wing and played across the field. Did extremely well. And about 15 minutes gone in this game. Three points each. Vinny O'Rourke drives the ball out the field. Granite will have to get to this. It's held on to there. By Brian O'Hara gives it off towards Alan Nealon. Nealon playing the ball on there, looking for David Hines. Hines does very well to hold on with David Hines. Still on the ball and he's fouled on this occasion. And he wins the free about 45 minutes out from goal, but over towards the sideline. Michael O'Donnell on the ball. I think he might kick this one. Liam O'Rourke making a burst inside. Doesn't get it. So kicking into a strong breeze, Michael O'Donnell ups on this occasion to give it towards Liam O'Rourke. O'Rourke does very well, turning his man still, Liam O'Rourke on the ball, a very strong customer, he may have taken a few steps there. A great ball from Liam O'Rourke across to Liam and Hines, Hines shoots, oh and it's the pass back out to Hines again! And it's gone wide, a great attempt from David Hines, but it hit the post. Well what a ball across from Liam O'Rourke, and Hines almost... Sent the granite faithful 
into ecstasy. It was a piece of magic from David Hines and it just came off the pole. Damon Crow and County Silky Stars on this occasion. So that's the danger of David Hines in there. All it takes is one moment. And Eamon Crow with the kick out now. A lucky escape on that occasion for Father Manning Gay of Granard are winning the midfield battle at the moment. James Hines tries to go down and it's held on this occasion by Brian O'Hara. Uh, towards Kirby Sheridan Sheridan she ups the play David Hines again. Peter McCray goes for it. Hines nearly gets on the end of it. Which way is that free going to go? No free at all. Alan Nealon on the ball now. David Hines down injured. Nealon still on the ball. Gives it out towards Michael O'Donnell. O'Donnell gives it towards James Hines. Hines, two or three drumlish men in his way. Still James Hines on the ball. Brilliantly dispossessed by Frank McNamee. And away come Drumlish. And they win the free out. Seamus Gallagher on the ball. So, David Hines picking up an injury there. So, three points each. But great play there from Liam Moore to spot David Hines on the edge of the square. Brilliantly pulled back, soccer style. Hines picked it up, went for, came back off the post, and on the second occasion, the ball was just punched just to the right and wide. I note that Joe Donnan is warming up down here. Is Joe Mobile going to introduce him at this early stage? Things seem to be going to plan for Granard at the moment it's a real rip-roaring contest both sides really going for it that ball driven down the field there by Eamon Crow breaks loose Colin Hanafy's going to get his hands on this Hanafy being tackled there by Michael O'Donnell and Michael Gettings Hanafy wins the free John Bannon Tries him to get out, well, he drives it in there, Shane McGovern going for breaks it away from Pudgy Davis and the Gunner defence does well to dispossess Davis, Shane McGovern is bursting out the right wing here, he'll take on Paul McCormick, he shoves him out of the way, he's still on the ball, he won't get by Paul McCormick that easy, he gives it back towards Conor O'Hara who gives it towards Silver Blessing and Blessing bursts his way out, been tackled by two or three men, but Milady goes for him this occasion, Brian O'Hara on the ball now, a great game, O'Hara drives it down, a good intelligent ball from Brian O'Hara towards James Hines, Hines looking for a man inside, looking for David Hines. Hines getting away again from Pete McQueen. Hines will try to turn him here. David Hines on the ball, trying to cut his way inside. David Hines wins the free for Granard. He's having an outstanding game at left corner third. Pete McQueen having his problems at the moment with the young Granard star. And this is certainly a free you would fancy Cliff Sheridan to tap over the bar. So David Hines performing extremely well in that Granard full forward line. Anthony Brennan will obviously have to try and figure out some way of curtailing young Hines. Cliff Sheridan 14 yards out, about 20 yards to the right of the goal. He pops it over the bar and Granard are in front once again in the 2001 Parkhouse Hotel County Final. Eamon Crow jogs out with the ball to take yet another kick out. David Blessing in getting it. Getting in some much needed water. Well, John Manning can be quite pleased as a referee. He's had to deal with no nasty incidents so far in this game. Hopefully that's how it'll stay. This ball coming out towards Martin Milady. Milady is playing at right half forward now, marking Alan Nealon. Two extremely good wing half backs, usually, but Milady being asked to play that forward today. That ball played there towards David Hannafy. Has been relatively quiet so far. But no doubt as the game goes on, his influence will increase. Frank McNamee plays a good cross field ball, looking for Carl O'Reilly. O'Reilly on the ball, being tackled on by Brian Sheridan, gives it off there towards Pete McQuaid. McQuaid a long way up the field, looking for Pudgy Davis. Davis space with Shane McGovern. Davis having to work hard to win the ball against McGovern. He's been pushed all the way out, 20 yards further out the field. Brian O'Hara is under this when he should win it. He doesn't win it. It breaks loose. It's held on to there by Alan Nealon. Nealon coming out with the ball and feeds it off towards Shane McGovern. McGovern looking for options. He's been faced there by Carl O'Reilly. He kicks it long, but only towards the winning arms of Podgy Davis. Davis goes for the score. But no, that one's not going to happen for Podgy Davis. It goes harmlessly to the left and wide. John O'Beatle having a word there, I think, with Shane McGovern. Not happy with that ball. McGovern has performed quite well so far in this game. And it's going to be a kick out now for Vinny O'Rourke. The wind continues to blow down Pierce Park here. In Drumlish's favour in this first half, Michael Gettings 
and David Hanafy under the ball. It's broken away there by Michael Gettings, but David Hanafy will eventually get to it. Hanafy feeds it off there towards Carl O'Reilly and will look for the return. O'Reilly bounces the ball, drives it in right foot. A fine drive from Carl O'Reilly, but it's just gone tail to the left and wide, and Podge Davis won't be pleased with that quality of ball into him. He obviously went for the score there with a strong breeze behind him. It didn't work out, and the score remains the same. Suddenly it's darkened here in Pierce Park. Could there be a shower of rain on the way? Fine drive by Vinny O'Rourke against the breeze, might I add. Referee, a judging Michael Gettings to have pulled out of David Hanafy there. From this win the free, and no doubt Hanafy will take it. Could well look for Podgy Davis with this. I note that Michael Kane is on to the Drumnish side. Petey McQuaid is making way, so. From the line, but or a free kick now for David Hanafy to take. Quick ball. Inside there, well played off, and away come Drumlish. David Hanafy trying to burst through, won't get through that ground of defence so easily. On the ball now is Paul Brady, Brady not getting through. Well, Shane McGarver making a good attempt to go down on the ball, and wins is free. And I think David Hanafy might well go into the book for that. I think he's already been ticked, as far as I know. No, he's just been ticked now. And Vinny O'Rourke is going to take the kick out, or well, the free kick, should I say. Good drive there from Vinny. Kippy Sheridan under it. Kippy holds on to it there. Been faced by Michal Kane. He drives the ball long. Frank McNamee wins it. Frank McNamee playing very well at the moment for Father Manning Gales. Drives the ball long inside. Brightshire trying to get in the Podgy Davis is on the ball now. Face with Shane McGovern, still Podge Davis on the ball. Davis taking his time, popping it over the bar, and it's four points each. So a fine score there from Podge Davis. A good score there. So Drumlish just playing the ball, nice and simple. Long ball in, Podge Davis gets it, puts it over the bar. Could well be the formula that could see them win the Sean Connolly Cup. I'm sure Shane McGovern will have other ideas. And a long way to go in this game. The ball dropping around the centre of the field. David Hanafy should get to it. No, it's bounced past two or three players. Held on to there by Michal Kane. Michal Kane being tackled by Liam O'Rourke. O'Rourke puts in a late challenge. It's going to be a free for Father Manning Gales. And certainly you'd fancy Podge Davis to tap this over the bar. And that could be quite a simple score for them. Okay, making a bit of a burst up the wing here. Paddy Davis is going to go for a score from this one, I'd imagine. Davis generally fully assured from free kicks from the ground. Appointed free taker for the Longford County team. Davis taking his time. Strokes the ball, right footed, he hits it high, has it gone over the bar, it is indeed a fine score there from Podge Davis, he won't miss too many of them this evening. And it's five points to four, and Drumlish hit the front for the first time in this county final. So Granard have it all to do, they are playing into the face of a very, very strong breeze. O'Rourke steps up with the kick out, a brilliant kick out there from Vinny O'Rourke against the breeze, Kippy Sheridan under it, Sheridan wins the ball and picks it up there at the second attempt, well won there by Kippy Sheridan, who's playing very well at the moment at right half forward, David Blessing and bursting through and Drumlish quite simply giving away the free once again, every time he gets in the ball, he seems to win a free or make a little bit of space, Blessing and looking for options here, drive the ball in, he spotted Liam O'Rourke on his own, O'Rourke doesn't get to it however, it's going to be James Hines who'll have to get there David Hines coming out the field Hines tracking back, now Tony McLaughlin oh, he was lucky there, it was half blocked down by Desi Kiernan but they've eventually won the free that's going to be taken there by David Hanafy Hanafy looking for Podge Davis inside Shane McGovern, 
tracking Davis, watching where he's going. Long ball. McGovern should get to this one. Up he goes. He does just about enough, and he wins the free out. Shane McGovern getting a round of applause here from the Granite crowd on the hill. Referee going to have a word there, I think, with Brian Sheridan and Michael Mullaney. Oh, a bit of a mistake there from Shane McGovern, and a goal on here for Drumlish. It is indeed a goal for Drumlish. A moment of madness. Shane McGovern tried to play the ball across the goal. Vinny O'Rourke didn't spot it. And it's a goal scored there by Michael Mullaney. So I think Anthony Brennan won't believe his luck. They won't pick up an easier goal than that. He had nobody to beat. And just as it seemed as everything was going to plan for Granite St. Mary's, it's now 1-5 to 4 points. And all of a sudden they're 4 points behind. So now down injured is Michael Mullaney, the goal scorer. Joe Mullaney is up off his feet now. So a little bit of a breakdown in communication between the fullback and the goalkeeper on that occasion. And the ball is driven out the field there by Vinny O'Rourke. It's won, brilliantly won, might I add, by Michael O'Donnell. O'Donnell being tackled there by two or three players. Doesn't win the free. Maybe a little bit unlucky on that occasion. Bright Sheridan going for the ball. So too, Michael Mullaney. Sheridan gets on the end of it. He do well just a pun and he nearly wins the ball. Well, the referee not giving him a free there. It's going to be a free in for Drumlish to be taken by Carl O'Reilly. Audrey Davis had ran loose there on that occasion. Michal Kane off to drive the ball in. Didn't work. Cliff Sheridan is having a great game at wing half forward. And away goes Brian O'Hara. Ran out the score badly after that goal that they've just given away. He tried to give it in there to Philip O'Hara. Just didn't work on this occasion. And Gary Brady wins the ball. Gary Brady. Drives the ball out the field. David Blessing is under. Blessing and holds on to it. He tries to burst his way through. Gives it to Michael Gettings. Gettings driving a long ball in. Looking for Philip O'Hara. O'Hara might just get to that. No, I don't think so. But he's kept it in play. But it's going to be a line ball for Drumlish. Suddenly the game plan just might have gone out the window. Tony McLaughlin holding off Brian O'Hara there. Another occasion. And away comes David Hannafy. Hannafy will pump the ball along. It's the supply line to Podgy Davis that they just might have to stop. Davis on the ball now, faced by Shane McGovern. McGovern will have to try and do something to mark Podgy Davis. Davis kicks it and it goes to the left and wide. John O'Reilly up off his feet, encouraging Shane McGovern. Still only four points between the sides and a very, very strong breeze. And Finney O'Rourke taking a few steps back now. Drumlish will be delighted to be four points ahead. Going in at half time, if that's the way it stays, Granner will have to show their trademark grit and determination to get their way back into this game. Michael O'Donnell manages to play the ball under heavy pressure. Michael Gettings tries to drive it down the field. Lim O'Rourke doesn't just hold on to it on this occasion. And Frank McNamee doing extremely well to win the ball and wins a free for Drumlish. He'll kick it in long there to Podgy Davis. Davis goes for this ball, wins the ball. Davis is having a good game at full power, a very good game. Carl O'Reilly looks at him across the field, opts to kick it in long instead. Two or three granite players under it. Anna Nealon tries to win it, doesn't win it. Eventually wins it and drives it out, but only towards the winning arms of Michal Kane. Kane has all the time in the world to go for a score. Well, he hasn't all the time in the world now. Carl O'Reilly trying to get inside in his right boot. Gives it to David Hannafy. Hannafy kicks it left footed. A great kick from David Hannafy. And over the bar for Father Manningales. Win six to four points, a great score there for David Hannafy. And all of a sudden, the complexion of this game has changed drastically. So, Finney O'Rourke now prepares to take yet another kick out. As we approach half time. Ball driven out the field. How Granite could do it. Just one score before half time. Cliff Sheridan again wins the ball in the centre of the field and wins a free. Brilliantly held once again by Cliffy Sheridan. He's giving an exhibition of high feeling there around the centre of the field and over hundreds here on the wing. Playing extremely well. They have a blessing. They'll try and pump this ball in. He's looking for 
Philip O'Hara, but that ball was very well read by Francis McNamee, and away come Father Manning Gales again, they drive it down the field, Shane McGovern coming storming out now, McGovern wins the ball, he needs to drive this down the field, taps it on the toe, bounces the ball, then followed here by Podgy Davis and drives it down the field, looking for Liam O'Rourke, go roll, goes for it, fails to win it however, and away comes Gary Brady, Brady gives it off towards Colin Hannafy, Hannafy a cool head, gives it there towards Paul Brady on his own, Michael O'Donnell checking back, gives it towards Podgy Davis, Davis, Pops the ball inside there for Michael Mullaney. Mullaney trying to get away from Brian Sheridan. They do well not to foul. Back out towards Paul Davis. Davis takes his time. Goes for it. It's a fine kick. And it's gone just to the right and wide. But once again, Davis getting on the ball. Still, despite the mistake, there's still only five points between, between these sides. An extremely strong breeze. And it's going to pro prove there with Davy Hines getting on the ball. They're well capable of scoring goals. It was just very unfortunate that that one came off the post. I think we might well be approaching half time here. Joe Donald continues to warm up under us. I know how that wins this one. But they need to get the ball inside a little bit quicker. Held on to there. David Glassman takes a quick. Gives it to Liam O'Rourke. That's Conor O'Hara outside him. Off the board alone. Drives a long ball in. Looking for Philip O'Hara. O'Hara just doesn't win it on this occasion. Away comes Francis McNamee. McNamee start... Uh, no, Johnny McLaughlin, should I say. Starting down the wing. Runs over me out clean towards Paul McCormick. Brilliantly blocked down by Cliff Sheridan. Once again. If Granite were to win this county finally, he'd surely be a nomination for man of the match at the moment anyway. He's playing outstanding football. Desi Keenan gives it out there towards Brian O'Hara. O'Hara taking his time towards Liam O'Rourke. O'Rourke gets his hands on the ball. Face there by Michal Kane drives a long ball, but David Hannafy wins that with ease and comes out with it. Gives it out there towards Gary Brady. Brady gives it in towards towards Paul Brady. Brady face there with David Blessing. Gives it towards Paul, Paul G. Davis. He's having a good day at the moment at the office anyway. Brent Sheridan cuts that one out, and that ball is going to go out for a line ball to Drumlish. Well, no. Tommy Dunham, not sure which way to give that. He decided not to give it anyway. He let the referee make the decision. <laughs> Certainly with a strong breeze going down the field, you wouldn't bet against Paddy Davis swinging this one over. It'll be a fine score, Michael Kane is on his own across the field, it's a great kick from Paget Davis, a dangerous kick. Hanafy goes for Michal Kane on the end of it. Kane goes down on the ball, being tackled there by Cliff Sheridan. Sheridan do that to kick him out, he turns inside him. Send Michal Kane on the ball, tackled there by Conor O'Hara. Pat O'Reilly takes his time, goes for the kick. Oh, that ball, breaking inside, it's dangerous times in the Granite full back line. And it's going to be a free out for Granite. So we're deep into injury time now. In this first half, five points. A five point difference at half time here in Pierce Park. It's Father Manning Gales 1 6, St. Mary's 4 points. It's going to plan so far for Father Manning Gales, aided by a mistake in the Granite backline, which led to a, quite an easy goal for Michael Mullady. Apart from that, it seemed to have been working out for Jason Mavia's side. They have an awful lot to do in the second half to get themselves back into it, but with a strong breeze behind them, it's certainly not an insurmountable lead. Half time, the score in Pierce Park, bottom inning games, 1-6, Granite 4 points. So at about 25 past 5, we'll know who the 2001 County champions are here in Longford. At the moment, it's 1 6 to 4 points in favour of Father Manning Gales. There's a strong breeze in favour of St Mary's of Granard, but a breeze isn't going to win this game for them. It's going to take grit and determination to get their way back into it. Michael Gettings has gone off the Granard side. Now onto the Granard. Cliffy Sheridan has moved to midfield. Joe Donnell is in, by the way. And the ball breaking them down there. Paul McCormick gives it towards David Hannafy. Hannafy drives a long ball inside, looking again for Roger Davis. Davis, do well to get to that one. He does indeed get to it. Shane McGovern sticking with him, not letting him inside. Shane McGovern making a burst up the field. This will be a very important score for Father Manning Gales. After to get it inside, goes Michael Mullaney, shoots, and over the bar. And I was looking for Granard that that didn't end up a goal. A great move all the way up the field there. Shane McGovern doing very well indeed. Number six on his back, but playing at right half back. Sickness between the sides now. 
and that was a very, very important score. As Vinny Roar prepares to take his first kick out with the aid of the breeze. The breeze which may just have died down a little bit. It's a fine drive of ball. Up goes Brian O'Hara. He holds on to it, does very well indeed. Tackle there by two or three men. Wins the free. Leaves it there for David Blessing. Blessing has decided he's going to pump this in long. Harry Brady in his way there. He drives it in a very long ball indeed. Joe O'Donnell is under it. O'Donnell breaks it down, all right. But it's picked up there by Eamon Crow. Crow taking his time coming out with the ball. A left foot, a kick down the centre towards David Hannafy. Hannafy turns. Faced by Cliffy Sheridan. That ball is fed off there towards Seamus Gallagher. Gallagher bursting up the field once again. Gallagher sizing up his options. Gives it there towards Porrick Brady. Brady looking inside. Podgy Davis has made a move inside. A good ball. No, not quite a good ball. In fact, it's gone out over the line. It's going to be a line ball to Granard to be taken by Shane McGovern. McGovern drives the ball long down the field. Michael O'Donnell goes up, fails to win it, but it's held onto there by Philip O'Hara playing a captain's role there, diving in on the ball. Desi Kiernan kicks a good ball into what Joe O'Donnell. O'Donnell, they'll be expecting him to have a big influence in this second half. Desi goes down injured, but it's picked up there by James Hines. It's a high ball. Liam O'Rourke is under it. He do well to win it. O'Rourke trying to hold off Michal Kane there. Doesn't win it, however, and it's picked up instead there by wing half back Francis Lennon. Lennon gives it out towards David Hannafy. Hannafy taking his time. Drives that long ball, a very long ball indeed. It's going to be a free to Granard. Good work there by Brian Sheridan. Michael Manadia judge will pull this jersey. And David Hannafy kicks the, or David Blessing, should I say, kicks the ball across the field. That's another free in quite a kickable position. You'd imagine they'll put this down now and just tap it over the bar. A long way to go in this game. Well advised to take their points. David Hines trotting out to take this one. Long way out, bit of a breeze behind him, although the breeze seems to have died down just a little bit here. So he's about 40 metres out. Hines steps up, he hits it high, is it coming in? No, that's tailing. Harmsey to the right and wide, that's a score Granite could have done with at the beginning of this second half. <coughs> so at the moment, just not going to plan. For Granard St. Mary's, Eamon Crow prepares to take the kick out once again. The stand packed over there. Quite a large crowd in attendance. Estimated up on 6,000. Cliffy Sheridan under it, breaks it down. Held on to there by Liam O'Rourke. Surely he threw that ball. But it's won anyway by Paul McCormick. McCormick did enough to win it, but it's not held on to. And Ananine is going to get his hands on this ball. At least he should. He gets a kind of a punch there to the face, but holds on to the ball. Leaves it there for David Blessing, and Blessing will no doubt drive this ball in long, looking for Joe O'Donnell. It's a good ball from David Blessing, and held on to by Joe O'Donnell. O'Donnell bounces the ball, tries to get past his man, kicks the ball in there, looking for Philip O'Hara. O'Hara do well to turn his man here, O'Hara. Shoots on, surely that's a penalty, a penalty for Granard. Precisely what Tremish Whitten have wanted, and precisely what this game needed, a penalty for Granard. Not quite sure who's going to take it just yet. Philip O'Hara down injured. Philip, of course, had two... Serious injuries to his leg, down through the ears, broke his leg twice. He's okay, I think he's up. I think the Granite players will be hoping that he'll be fit to get up and continue this game because he really is the kind of player that could just turn this county final. What an opportunity this is for Granard. Remember in the semi-final, they scored a vital penalty. It was Liam O'Rourke on that occasion who scored on Gavin Tonra. And of course, later in the game, Tonra went up the field and missed a penalty. So it's Liam O'Rourke who's going to take the responsibility once again. He took away a penalty in the semi-final against Conham Kill. Can he took away this one? The kind of a man who will hit it with power. Probably the safest way if he keeps it on target, he stands a good enough chance. This a goal that certainly you feel if Granite were to miss this penalty. It would hand the impetus to Father Manning Gales, but if they were to score it, the momentum could well carry them past Father Manning Gales to the Sean Connolly Cup. O'Rourke versus Crow. What a vital kick. Eight minutes into the second half. Liam O'Rourke steps up, shoots. It's saved by Eamon Crow. And that is a bad miss for Granite. A great save by Eamon Crow. He saved the penalty against Porrick Shanley in the first round against Recline. And he saved this one. Glenn Kelly warming up. 
Panic stations down on the Granard bench. Can Kelly turn the game? That was a great opportunity for Granard to get themselves right back into it. Alan Eland is going to take the 45. Can they at least get one score out of it? Up steps Alan Eland. He chips it. They try to hold on to it. It's held on. Two or three players have it. Frank McNamee wins the ball. Safe as houses. Holds on to it and throws it back there towards Eamon Crow. That was a vital save by Eamon Crow. So six points still between the sides. Despite the fact that Granard had a penalty early in this second half. Missed by Liam O'Rourke. The Granard crowd trying to get behind him. Cliffy Sheridan going up. He's doing very well at midfield on David Hannafy. That ball given off there towards Alan Nealon. Nealon storming up the wing. Tried to hold on to it. It's very well won there by Francis Lennon. Lennon goes down injured. And Lennon down on the ground now. A bit of a break now for Father Man and Gales to catch their breath after quite an eventful start to the second half. Much time left in the game for Granard that they could only get a goal. But you would feel that they will need to score a goal in this game if they're to get back into it. Kick by Eamon Crow. He'll be a hero in Drumlish tonight if they're to win. That ball breaking kindly from Martin Malady who gives it towards Paul McCormick. McCormick blocked down by Cliff Sheridan and Sheridan storming through. Trying to win the ball at Cliff Sheridan again. What a performance by Cliffy Sheridan. Gives it out towards David Blessing and Blessing and storming through the centre as only David Blessing can. He's faced with Paul McCormick and he's still going. He gives it out there towards Joe O'Donnell. O'Donnell holding on to the ball. Blessing him. Faced again and turns, Paul McCormick, still with a blessing on the ball, this will be an important score, it's hanging in the air, Liam O'Rourke is under, could break kindly for David, David Hines, but no, Paul McCormick has it, and away come Father Man and Gales again, David Hannafy plays it out towards Seamus Gallagher, Gallagher turns back towards Hannafy, plays it out there towards Gary Brady, he has Paul Brady beside him, Ops got to give it to him, Brian Sheridan and Ma Michael Mullaney in a race for this one, Sheridan doesn't win it, and Drumlish have the ball, Michael Mnady plays it inside there. Paul David touches the ball. It has to be the f one of the first times in this second half after having a brilliant first half. Finds Martin Mnady with a brilliant crossfield ball. Mnady working his way inside. Still going Martin Mnady, but Granard dispossessed him and away they come. The big give away the ball in turn. And it's picked up by Carl Riley. Gives it towards Carl Hannafy. Inside is Paul Brady all on his own. And he has to do his beat the rope. He's surrounded by Granard players. He's done and very fortunate to get a free. Extremely fortunate. Well, he found himself in an awful lot of space there. I know that Kira Masterson is warming up for Granite as well. Certainly it seemed as if that should have been a free out. But Drumlish were taken nonetheless. John Fitzpatrick warming up for Drumlish. And Paul Davis will take that free. And taps it over the bar without too much bother. And that's an extremely important score after all that has gone down, gone on down this end of the field. So instead of three points between the sides, now there's seven. So still much time remaining, about 20 minutes. Joe Maveal is hoping these two young stars, Glenn Kelly and Kieran Masterson, will change the tide of this game. So Masterson is going in at wing back. Alan Eelan has been moved up front for a little bit more firepower. Liam O'Rourke makes way. Then Kelly goes into his position. Not quite sure who else is making way. Alan Eelan looking for somebody to... I think it's David Hines. David Hines is making way as well. So now, seven points between the sides. And a big kick out, a big ball for Gunnar. They need to win every one of them now at the moment. It's very, very scrappy there around the centre. Pull down only towards the winning arms of David Blessing and Blessing and taking his time, looking for somebody to give the ball to. Still holding on to it, being shadowed there by Conor Hannafy. Hannafy intends not to let him buy him. He does let him buy him, however, takes a tug of his jersey and very rightly it's going to be a free in for Granard. And it's going to be a yellow card for Colin Hannafy. Philip O'Hara looks like he's going to take free-taking responsibilities right now. 
Only eight to four points. It feels they need to get a score on the board very quickly now. So Philip O'Hara taking his time, stepping up, hits it. That one goes over the bar from Philip O'Hara. It was tight, but over she went. There's six points between the sides now. They're up, they're up off the Granard bench. It's do or die time now at the moment for Granard. About 20 minutes remaining. Anthony Brennan seems quite a content man at the moment. They seem to be scoring with just that little bit more ease down the other end. A high ball around the centre. Hanafi wins it. Well, David knocks it down to brother Colin. Colin wins the free. And Colin will no doubt pump the free in towards Podgy Davis. Waits for Davis to make the move. No, not to Davis on this occasion. Michael Mullady went for it. Mullady holds on to it despite falling to the ground. It's picked up there by Alan Nealon. However, Nealon was tracking back a high ball. You'd expect Frank Mack to hold on to what he does. Well, he just lets it fall at an inopportune time. But it's picked up there by Gary Brady. Brady wins a free out there for Father Manning Gales. Foul there by Joe O'Donnell. How will they rue that penalty miss? It's hard to know. Amy Crow sets the ball. Drumish have been here, they've done it. A very experienced side. You'd expect them not to throw away a six point lead in the county final. However, on the other hand, Granard have great resolve. It's going to be a free there. To be taken by Cliffy Sheridan, I'd imagine. Looking for somebody to give it to. Got a players wanted, sent in long. It is long, a long way in. Joe Donnell is under it, so too. Francis McNamee. McNamee failed to hold on to that one, but it breaks loose. And once again, onto the break is Tony McLaughlin. McLaughlin coming out with the ball, having a very, very good second half here is Tony McLaughlin. Played out there by Gary Brady. Towards Francis Lennon. Lennon kicks it long down the field. Nobody going to get to that one. Jumnish have two against one here. They need to be held up just very well there. Conor O'Hara. And O'Hara pulls on the ball. Down towards Alan Nealon. Nealon plays it into space. Looking for Michael O'Donnell. Michael O'Donnell gives it to the on-rushing Kira Masses. They could do it a score here. Masses and goes for it. But no, it's gone to the left and right. He had a man inside him. And Philip O'Hara not pleased with that. A good run there from Kira Masses. And the Granite supporters in the crowd a little bit quieter than the Drumlish ones at the moment. Because it's all going to plan for the men in maroon and gold. And the kick out from Eamon Crow. James Hines nearly holding on to it, but David Hanafy very assured on the ball. Doesn't give it away too often and gives it towards Francis Lennon. Lennon drives a long ball down the field. Podge Davis goes up for it, held on to there by Shane McGovern, extremely well held as he tries to work his way out with the ball. McGovern, an extremely good footballer. Onto the field goes John Fitzpatrick. And Paul McCormick makes way. Desi Cairn holds on to it, gives it back to Urbs. David Blessing and Vinny Blessing to try and get up the field as much as possible now. To give a little bit of an extra helping hand. Kippy Sheridan tried to get to it. He got a vital touch on it, however, towards Brian O'Hara. They win the free. Granard will, will do well to get the ball in as quick as possible. Kippy Sheridan looking for somebody to give it to Alan Neal and making a bit of a break here. So too is Joe O'Donnell. Joe O'Donnell. He has to get his hands on this one. He does. He holds on to a third and does. He shoots. It's a high ball, but that is going to go obviously to the right and wide. Granite just not finding a way through the Drumlish cover at the moment. So, Drumlish seem in control in this county final. About 15 minutes to go. Kick out there by Eamon Crow. Kippy Sheridan tried to go up and hold it. He was held off by David Hanafy. Hanafy did extremely well and gives the ball towards Donnie McLaughlin. He'll take the free himself, David Hanafy. Looking for Podgy Davis to make a move inside. Great ball from David Hanafy. What a pass all the way across the field. Spotted Podgy Davis' run. Davis face now with Shane McGovern. Granite can't afford to be giving away scores. Davis goes for the score outside of the right boot, but that isn't going to go out. And it's now gone out for a kick out for Granard. This game has lost a little bit of its cutting edge that it had in the first half. Jamish seem quite happy to settle for the way things are at the moment. They'll sit back, defend that missed penalty. A real turning point in this game. 
as well as the mistake in the first half. Kick out from Vinnie O'Rourke. Dropping around the centre. Desi Kiernan going up, failed to hold on to it. Blessing will pick up the pieces, however. Blessing trying to come out with the ball. He's fouled there, surely. Referee says no. He still there, but Blessing on the ball. Twists and turns. Doesn't give the ball away. Gives it to the on rushing Brian O'Hara, who cuts through the centre. F feeds it off there towards Kippy Sheridan. Kippy. Great ball from Kippy. Outside of the right boot. Down here, Masters. And Masters gives it off towards Michael O'Donnell. O'Donnell looking for somebody to give it to. Have to just drive the ball high in. It's a real hit and hope for Granard. Do we get their hands on it? No. It's Gary Bader who has the ball. Gives it off there towards Martin Mullaney and Drumnish break up the field. They have two or three men over. One of them is David Hannafy. Another one is Paul Bader who has moved on. So David Hannafy gives it off there towards Bader Collin. There seems to be a score on here for Drumnish. They have so many men over. Michael O'Donnell getting back. Colin Hannafy plays it into space there to Paul O'Reilly. Gives it towards Podgy Davis. Great break for Podgy Davis. And he shoots badly to the left and right. Well, you'd wonder... As play goes on, might they rule such chances? You'd feel if Drumnish were a point down, Paul Davis would have put that over the bar. <laughs> Still, two kicks of the ball between the sides. The question is, can Granard get those two kicks at the ball at the vital time and put the ball in the back of the net? Vinnie O'Rourke takes a few steps back and once again drives the ball along out the field. Up goes Brian O'Hara, held on to well won there in the middle by Philip O'Hara he won the break ups to give it long looking for Glenn Kelly Kelly will have to take a run at this Drumnish defence he's fouled now Drumnish needs somebody to be breaking inside quickly it didn't happen on that occasion and they'll just have to go for the score they've hit in a few hit and hope ones that maybe could have ended up in, could have gone for a point instead so they're going to give this one a go Cliffy Sheridan it's a long way out but he has quite a good left foot and quite a strong breeze behind him you fancy him maybe to put this over. Cliffy hits it. It's a good kick from Cliffy Sheridan and drops over the bar. A good score for Dano. They're five points down now. Five points between the sides. The Drumnish supporters and the Granite supporters look nervously up at the scoreboard. To see if things remain the same. Eamon Crow now with the kick out. About 12, 13 minutes remaining. Granard need a goal. Drumnish needs to just keep them out. To keep them out from scoring a goal, they should win this game. John Fitzpatrick on the ball now. Fitzpatrick trying to work his way out of trouble. A poor ball on that occasion from Fitzpatrick. It breaks. Who will it break for? Alan Nealon has the ball. Nealon turns very well indeed. Ups to give the ball inside. Joe O'Donnell would do well to win it. O'Donnell holds on to it. Still Joe O'Donnell on the ball. Gives it towards Philip O'Hara. O'Hara would do well just to take a point. Anything will do. Oh, he shot when he was off balance. And it goes harmlessly to the left and wide. So, that was another real chance for Granite to get us one point back. I wonder if they got within three points of them. It certainly would make for a very interesting last five minutes. Brian O'Hara, was he pushed in the back? Ref says no, it's held on to there by John Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick bursting his way out. Fails to get there, however, dives on the ball. Francis Lennon to hold on to it. David Hannafy bursting his way through. And wins the free. Michal Kane. Making a bit of a run up the left wing here, being followed by Glenn Kelly. Hanafy kicks the ball in, breaks, but the break is well watched there by Shane McGovern. McGovern looking for somebody to give the ball to. Pushes off Colin Hanafy, trying to burst his way out. It's not working there for Shane McGovern. And gives it off towards Alan Nealon. Nealon back towards Shane McGovern again. They're not giving the ball away. Well, just as I say it, they kick it in towards Francis McNamee, but Joe Donald gets there. And the linesman has given a line ball. Well, he seems to be given. He seems to be giving it towards Granard. So, 11 minutes of ordinary time, and whatever the referee chooses to add on. Porrick Brady failing to hold on to that one. Ananina will have to go down on it. He doesn't. And it's won by Donnie McLaughlin, and Donnie McLaughlin wins a free. So a free in to be taken over there. Cottle O'Reilly, I think it is. Cottle drives the ball in long. Podgy Davis is going to get there. He's 
almost dispossessed by Kippy Sheridan. Kippy does dispossess him, move to a tree. Granite players do, but the referee, John Manon, has decided that that's going to be a free in for a sliding tackle of some sort. So, as the clock ticks down, it looks more likely that Drumnish are going to win the county championship here. Peter Sheridan warming up for Granard. One last throw of the dice, perhaps, by Joe Mavihill. Granard have it all to do. Podgy Davis won't be phased by the supporters in the stand. You fancy him to kick that over. Davis wasting up the seconds, taking his time. He takes it quickly. Drumlish granted a little bit slack, but a brilliant tackle by Desi Kiernan. He did very well there, and it's going to be a free out. Great work by Desi, and away come Granard. Granard on a break here, and in particular, David Blessing. And Blessing in spots that he has Alan Nealon outside him. Nealon breaking up the right wing. Granard badly need a score of any sort now at this stage to keep them in the hunt. Plays it out towards Glenn Kelly. Kelly on his left boot will probably give it a go. He does give it a go, but it's gone harmlessly to the left and wide. And Peter Sheridan is on to the Granard side. So another ball goes a begging for Granard. James Hines making way. So James Hines worked hard at centre half forward. Eventually running himself out of steam. And Granard have to try and keep going now. Try and keep the battle going. Keir Masson goes in very, does very well just to play the ball towards Peter Sheridan rather than just bumping into the tackle, which some players would do. Michal Kane winning the ball in there. Drumlish seems so confident on the ball and rarely give it away. Francis McNamee wins the free out, wastes down another few seconds. And will take, and will take his time. Bound to be disheartening for Granner to see so many supporters leaving at the moment. Got her taking his time. Once again, wasting up those few seconds, plays the ball off there towards Patrick Brady. Brady will just pump the ball in. A good ball towards Cahill Riley, who's all on his own over in the right wing. He's been met now by two or three granite players. David Blessing and holds on to the ball. Blessing him bursting his way out. Peter Sheridan on it now. Sheridan looking for somebody to give it to. Kicks it long. Peter Bahar isn't going to get to that. Instead, Frank McNamee wins another ball. Certainly a candidate for man of the match is McNamee. Both himself and Davis have been outstanding for Drumlish. A high ball in there towards Michael Mullaney. Broken down there by Shane McGovern. McGovern trying to come out with the ball. And certainly that was no free in as far as I'm concerned. He seemed to be coming out with the ball. And maybe he just let his hand back. So, John Bannon. Well, John Bannon gives a yellow card to Shane McGovern. Obviously he saw it a little bit more clearly. And it's going to be a free in for Drumlish. And I think this could be... A very important score. The county final seems to have slipped away from Granard. And Polly Davis certainly needs no invitation to tap over 14 yard freeze. <laughs> Polly taps it over the bar. Quite an easy score for Jumlish. They've shown the experience and they've played some marvellous football in this game and it looks as if they're going to be the county champions in 2001. They've had heroes all over the field. Gary Brady's played quite well. Frank McNamee's been outstanding at centre halfback. David Hannafy and indeed Paul Davis, who has been a real thorn in the granite side. All they have is another five minutes to hang on. And you certainly fancy them to do that. High ball from Vinnie Rourke. It's broken down. Granite aren't going to get on this one. And it's well won in there. And it's going to be a free two drum to be taken by Paulie Brady. And referee seems to be going to give a hot ball for that. The crowd leaving here. Ball breaking loose, picked up there by Kipshun, and he wins his free. Went then an attempt to go down on the ball. Granard need goals. Two to be precise. Certainly, 
You wouldn't fancy that against this Drumlish defence who has played so well. The ball broken down. Well won in there by Eamon Crow. Crow taking his time coming out with the ball. Gives it up there towards Joey McLaughlin. McLaughlin plays it up the wing towards Michal Kane. Two or three Drumlish players there. Kane going down on the ball. Wins it. Being tackled there by Philip O'Hara. Wins the free in. O'Hara trying to get the ball. So it's going to be a line ball for Granard. There's two players in the Drumlish half of the pitch up here. Granard obviously feel that they've got to push everybody up. Kick by Cliffy Sheridan. It's a fine kick. Is it going to be a square ball? Joe Donald certainly saw his opportunity, but the referee says it was a square ball. Joe Donald was inside the square, and it's going to be a free out for Eamon Crow. About three minutes remaining. So, Drumlish supporters anticipate another cavalcade with the Sean Connolly Cup making its way out to Drumlish this evening. Certainly nobody could deny that they deserve it on their display today. They played quite well. Glenn Kelly on the ball now gives it off there towards Colm O'Hara. O'Hara bursting up the field, trying to get it inside. Held on to there by brother Brian. Brian loses the ball momentarily, turns, twists, wins a free in. Maybe a little bit lucky to win that one. Paul McCormick making his way back onto the Drumlish side by the looks of things. An unusual move by Eamon Brennan, but everything he's tried today so far has worked, so no reason why this won't. Not quite sure who's made way. That ball is going to go harmlessly out wide. Joe Donald made an attempt to get to it, but it just didn't work out for him. Large crowd leading, leaving Pierce Park now. Joe Mavihill looks at his watch. Surely he must feel at this stage it's all over. It was Porrick Brady that makes way for Paul McCormick. Eamon Crow drives the ball out the field. Cliffy Sheridan breaks it down into the waiting arms of Colin Hanafy, who does so much of unseen work there in the Drumlish backline. Wins an awful lot of breaking ball. Alan Nealon holding on to the ball now. Nealon trying to turn. Wins a free. Colin Hanafy down injured. So I think he might just have picked up a bang there in that last piece of play. Paul McCormick going over to see if he's okay. So Drumlish looked a very professional outfit today. Got the lucky break, but after that they really pile on the scores just after half time. At a vital time, that ball breaking inside there, held on to by Frank McNamee. McNamee once again winning the ball. Winning an awful lot of ball there around the centre has been Frank McNamee the whole game. Colin Hannafy once again finds himself on the ball, trying to get away there from the clutches of Desi Kiernan. Drumlish messing around him with the ball a little bit now. Gary Brady on it. Gives it back out towards Francis Lennon. Lennon drives it long up the field. Only Brian Sheridan and Michael Mullady there. Who's going to win the race to that one? It's going to be a line ball to Granard. Certainly there can't be much time left. Deep in injury time right now. Cliff Sheridan up to just belt it in. Hoping that a lucky break some way can come for Granard. Philip O'Hara has the ball, gives it inside. Well, Peter Sheridan didn't get on to the end of that one. He might have. Certainly if he got onto that, there could have been a goal in there for Granard, but away come Drumlish again. Gary Brady coming out with the ball. He's hit hard there by Joe Donald. Brian O'Hara standing up to John Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick doing very well. Porrig Davis. A lovely touch from Davis up the wing to David Hannafy. And Hannafy plays it on towards Paul McCormick. The real veterans in this Drumlish side. Proving their worth. David Blessing down injured. Seems to have cramp. Even Shane McGovern has been pushed up into attack at this late stage of the game. David Blessing down injured. He ran and ran and ran today, but it just didn't happen for them on the day. Well, the first half, a real electric affair. It was four points each after about 15 minutes. Both sides were tearing into it, playing very, very good football indeed. But this second half has somewhat slowed down Drumlish. Quite content, showing their experience, quite content to play out the rest of this game. 
defended excellently and didn't allow Granard in for a goal which could have been crucial. It was a penalty opportunity, of course, for Granard. They'll rue that miss. They'll also rue the mistake in the first half, but these things happen in football. That ball coming across the field. Brian Sheridan holds on to it, Sheridan, trying to get away from Brian McCormick. Paul McCormick, should I say. He kicks it in long. Great calling there from Tony McLaughlin. McLaughlin winning the ball. Joe O'Donnell, a judge to have foul Donny McLaughlin there. And Joe O'Donnell will go into John Bannon's book after that. So Johnny Kane now onto the Drumlish side. Cahill O'Reilly making way. And Emma Crow is going to take this free kick from the ground. Deep into injury time now at this stage in Pierce Park. And it seems as if David Hanafy is about to lift the Sean Connolly Cup. He soars high in the air there, almost winning the ball. Instead of John Fitzpatrick, gives it to Milady, who gives it into brother Michael Milady. Milady gives it off there to Paulie Davis. Davis trying to get away from Brian Sheridan. And that went out off Paulie Davis. And it's going to be a line ball to Granard. Davis in no rush to... Not exactly pulling out of the way so Brian Sheridan can take a, free, a quick free. David Blessing trying to make a few options for himself, charging through, but charging into two or three Drumlish players, stepping out of play, but winning a free. So, as for Man of the Match, hard to know. Certainly, Frank McNamee gave an outstanding performance, as did Johnny McLaughlin, and nobody could doubt the influence that Paulie Davis has had on this game. A real marksman and chief, Colin Hanafy, another man who's played outstanding football today for Father Manning Gales. Won an awful lot of breaking ball. And always was the link man, it seems, between defence and attack. So, Emma Brennan seems to have found the winning formula. Kick out now to be taken by, well, free kick by Eamon Crow. As the clock just seems to tick down even further. Of course, John Fitzpatrick, the ball breaking loose there. Alan Eden's not going to get to it. Picked up a step by Michal Kane. Michal Kane gives it off towards Martin Malady, towards David Hanafy. Hanafy making a burst through the centre, being tackled there by Kieran Masterson. Still Hanafy on the ball, gives it off there towards Martin Malady again. Malady goes for the score. A fine kick by Martin Malady, but it's held on to there by Vinny O'Rourke. And Vinny punts the ball out, and as he does, Father Manning Gales have acclaimed the 2001 county champions the win on a scoreline of 1-9 to 6 points a great display from Eamon Brennan's side some marvellous performances all round and the Sean Connolly Cup going back to Drumlish for the first time since 1998 yeah. Very close. Can we go back a tiny bit? Can we go back a small bit? Huh? Don't call. We're grand now. Raymond, would you like to say a few words, Raymond? I've called you again. Don't even know what I'm doing. Woo!
fine performance of football today. Thanks very much. <laughs> As usual, the county final is a great occasion for all the Gales within the county. And once again, the Gales of the county crowned here to Pierce Park today to see a very fine sporting game. And I would like to pay tribute, first and foremost, to the people who prepared Pierce Park and had it in excellent condition today. And I'd like to thank Jimmy McDonald and his ground staff for having Pierce Park in such a fine state today. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> I would also like to thank the clubs who participated in this year's senior championship. It was a very sporting championship. And I would also like to pay tribute to all of the officials and the referees. And I would like to say thank you to John Bannon and his officials for a very fine job today. Go to meet him on good job. I would like to pay tribute to a very fine and sporting St. Mary's team. They brought an awful lot of colour to this year's championship and they certainly lost no friends today. I hope that they will go on and repeat this performance and maybe next year they will be up here except in the Sean Connolly Cup. Well done to St. Mary's.
gospel, but definitely by no means least. I'd like to thank Anthony Brennan. I like him on three times a week. He's, he's traveled 110 miles. And at, at the start of the year, when we were looking for somebody to take over the club, it's no secret that there was many different men asked. But when Anthony Brennan was asked, he only had to be asked once. And he jumped, he jumped at the opportunity to manage us. And I think it's fair to say that he's done a fairly good job. <laughs> They're, they're an excellent club with an excellent tradition, and this, this, this is our first this is our first title in 19 years. And uh, they say they say that they say that you have to lose one to appreciate a winning one. So I I don't know the that the are back. They're a great team. They have great, they have great mentors over them in the whole lot. And we look forward to drinking with them during the week. <laughs> I think you all know the situation, and he wasn't able to play today. And that man is James Bradley. Victorious Fatherman and Gales captain uh, David Hannafy. David, how does it feel to have the Sean Connolly Cup back in the dressing room? Oh, it feels absolutely brilliant, especially after the last two years I've like, been out of it and coming back, winning it this year. It's nearly as good as winning it the first time around in 1996. And uh, how, what's the difference between uh, how you felt in the dressing room 12 months ago and how you feel in here now? I don't think words could describe how we, how we felt last year. We were absolutely disappointed now. We were gutted. Um, we played, we played useless last year and we've no, we, we've no excuses for us. Abilara were simply the best team and this year now we came out and we felt we had a, we had a point to prove and I think we did that today. And, uh, did the game go according to plan or were there any hitches in the game plan? Well, we hadn't really a game plan. It was just go out and every man, every man played to his best. Um, I, don't, I don't think we really played that well. I don't think Granner played particularly well either but it just happened to go that we just got the lucky goal at the right time and I think it, in the end we probably just about deserved it. You know? What stage of the game did you decide to yourself oh, I should better work on the speech? Uh, <laughs> I, I thought about it a bit during the week and I was checking out the old English-Irish dictionary but uh, no, I, just, I didn't really think about it too much. Just At the end of the game, just, just hearing when we're all congregating in front, I just decided God, I'd better start thinking of a few words of Irish now. Um, last uh, would it be a good night celebration out in uh, Drumlis tonight? It'll be a good fortnight celebration, yeah, definitely. Ah, yeah, I will have a few points anyway, yeah. Uh, have you got your mind on the Leinster Club Championship or is it just celebration? 
I wouldn't say we were mice in Denster Club. No, we just take every game as it comes, and you never know. I, I'm not too sure who we're drawn against, but we just play it, play it as it comes. I like, can do our best. Congratulations, uh, Brendan. Uh, how does it feel to have won the Sean Connolly Cup? Thanks very much. Uh, it's a great honour for me as chairman uh, <coughs> to have won the Sean Connolly Cup with the be involved with the team here. Uh, they're a fantastic panel of players, and it's a it is a great it's a great achievement to have won the Connolly Cup back again. This is the fifth time we've been in the final in the space of six years, and it's a tremendous achievement. We won the title in 96, 97, 98. We were beaten by a point in 99, and the team that beat us in the first round went on and won the championship that year. Last year, we were, we were beaten in the final, and this year, we're back and won the final. So it's a tremendous achievement. Uh, would it be fair to say that you came back a uh, far more determined side after losing the final last year? It would indeed. Uh, I've never seen a team as disappointed in the dressing room after any game as, as, as last year. And uh, we, talked, we talked after the game, and with one goal in mind, and that was to be back again to win the championship this year. And please God, it worked out that way. Um, it was a different structure you had this year. Um, you lost the inspirational Jimmy Hannafy, but you gained Anthony Brennan. Uh, what kind of a role did he play in winning the Cup today? I uh, um, had Jimmy Hannafy and my Thomas Gale and my Pat Corrigan. And they are involved with the team for five years, and they've done, they done Trojan work with our team. They won uh, 15 titles in the space of five years. That's between championships, leader cups, and leagues. So they were a tremendous, uh, they were a very hard act to follow. So we've got a new team management in place this year. We've got Anthony Brennan from Turles Strand in Sligo, and uh, Anthony he travelled a round trip of 120 miles to each training session on average of three times a week. So it's great commitment on Anthony's behalf. Then we had Paddy O'Neill, a selector as well. Paddy came from Gotletra. He married into our, our parish, and he was a great worker, great, great man of training, never missed a training session, and tremendous worker. And then we had Morris Mork as well, and Morris was involved with the team back some years ago, and Morris had tremendous experience, and the three men worked really well together. And uh, <coughs> you can see the results of all their efforts there today. Uh, would it be fair to say there'll be a wild night of celebrations out in Drumlis tonight? Please God, uh, uh, please God, now the will indeed, yeah, we're really looking forward to the celebrations later on tonight. Thank you very much, Brendan. Um, I'm here with uh, Anthony Brennan, the manager of the Drumlish side. Anthony, at the beginning of the year, you were a stranger to Drumlish, but you're a stranger no longer. How do you feel? Well, I feel very, very proud. Um, it's been a particularly brilliant day for me, as well as for the team. It's a very proud day to come up and win a championship on your first, on your first year, albeit with a team that's very experienced and would have been expected to be there anyway. But um, it's great to win it. And, and it may not have been pretty, but it was effective. And, um, what were your first impressions of Drumlish when you uh, first arrived, probably, la in last winter? Well, I love the place. It's, a, it's, a, it's been exceptional. It's, it's a, the, the, the club spirit within it is, is really exceptional. It's something I find very difficult to get used to because that, most clubs wouldn't have that sort of spirit. The, uh, that goes even to the ladies' committee within the club and the club chairman, the officials. They're all a very hard-working bunch. And uh, hard work usually wins out, and that's it's been very striking how uh, hard work of the club is. Um, did everything go to plan for you today, or were there a few hitches? That <laughs> there are always hitches. I mean, you don't plan county finals that really that much because it's really on the day. It's it's who wants it most and who's our experience won it for us today. And pl players like Frank McNamee in particular had a huge bearing on the game. I thought, and and. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it was a pretty game to watch. It, was, it wasn't a tactical game as such. It was just hard on his football, but our, our overall cuteness, I think, got us by. At uh, what stage, if any stage, did you kind of say to yourself, right, when we have this one in the bag? I'd say with about 10 minutes to go a bit from the end, I'd say I, I knew then, deep down I knew we had it, because they, they had had the opportunities and had, had wasted them, you know. Finally, um, have you any plans of making an assault on the Leinster Club Championship for... Well, it'd be nice to do well in it, yeah. It'd be nice to do well in it. Uh, any manager worth the salt wants to go as far as he can. If you're not in it to win, you shouldn't be in it. And uh, it would be very important to me that we, we do well in the Leinster Championship. That's what it's all about. And that performance there wouldn't win many Leinster club matches. But look at the pressure is off. The county the county championship is, a, is an, an entity within itself. It's very difficult to win within, a, within a, your own county. That comes even in the, the weakest of the counties. It's very difficult to win your own club championship, and we've got that o o off our shoulders now. We can prepare for the, the club. If I can stop them drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, anyway, Andrew. Okay. Thanks.